welcome 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 to my channel once again today we're flying all the way to sri lanka and who do we have today today we have gobinaj shivaraja i hope i got the name right but i call him seagull for short and he's the media and marketing manager at the national olympic committee of um sri lanka um i want to encourage all those from sri lanka to stay tuned as we discuss and um uh, decongest um sports in sri lanka and for all sports enthusiasts around the globe and this will be a very good opportunity for us to um, appreciate sports elsewhere understand the issues um emerging from sri lanka i wanted to stay tuned as we discuss sports in sri lanka thank you Well, thank you so much, um, Sigo. I call him Sigo, but he will introduce himself very well um, to, to you, um, the audience who are listening. And today, the nature of the discussion would hinge on um, sports structures, policies, and funding in Sri Lanka. For those that do not know Sri Lanka, um, Sri Lanka is just beneath India, uh, but I guess, and Sigo will take us through very well um where sri lanka is and the nature of sri lanka and all that but before then sigo can you tell us brief about yourself um who is sigo i mean you can mention your full name we know sigo <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, derek uh, first of all thank you very much for inviting me to uh, share the knowledge about the sports structures policy and the uh, the development in Sri Lanka on sports. So before yeah. that, as you requested uh, to introduce all me. So my name is Sivaraja Gobinath, SI from my father's name and Gio from my, my name. So that's I combined and made it as a seagull. So my friends, all my international friends, they know me as seagull here. Uh, so basically I did my undergraduate in mathematics and statistics. Then I lectured for five years. Then re I realized that sport is like a great tool and I also uh, practice several sports and I, I became the national champion in Sri Lanka University Games. Then I realized that because as, as a person coming from the war zone, I really want to do some developments in my country. Then I realized that yes, education and the sports are real tools that we can change the people and we can change our community and all. Uh, that's how I, I want to move with that one. Then I luckily got this uh, Seoul National University Dream Together Master's Scholarship where I met this gentleman, Derek uh in fourth batch and fifth batch i was very fortunate uh because uh, i was be also like part of this pyeongchang olympic games i did my research there and i graduated from seoul national university at the end uh, in sport management degree now i'm working for national olympic committee of sri lanka as a marketing and media manager as well as i'm voluntarily involved in many other things uh, namely i'm um, the project manager uh, for tech ball federation of sri lanka it's newly established and I'm working on it, yes. That's my brief introduction, Derry. Yes, yeah, so that's it. I told you his name is Gobina Shivaraja. I hope I got yeah. it right. Anyway, yeah. so today we'll be talking about sports in Sri Lanka. And um, I mean, you're the best person to tell us um, what sports is. And usually the first thing that people ask is, is there a designated sports ministry um, in Sri Lanka? Or you could tell us um, what it is like. Yeah. So in Sri Lanka, basically, we have a designated sports ministry. It's called Ministry of Sport and Youth. But mm -hmm. the thing is, when the minister change, the ministry change, the government changes, the name of the ministry changes. Say, for an example, the previous government, they name it as uh, there are three, four ministry under one, like yeah. Ministry of Telecommunication and uh, Sports and Youth, something like that. So if you look at the past history, even the, within the last six years, there are four or five ministers in Sri Lanka for sports. Yeah, that, that's uh, interesting. The, yeah, <laughs> that's the reason, <laughs> you know, there are yeah. so many changes that happen often. So we will discuss more about the things yeah. later. Yeah. Well, it is interesting, but not surprising. I, I've seen in various countries do change. And as you know, I'm Ghanaian in Ghana. Um, they do have to say with um, the, the, there is a similar trend where um, 
politics, as politics changes its color, sports also changes its name. But of course, as you said, we'll look deep into this. But can you can you tell us um, um, the the sports ministry? Um, are there agencies or their departments? How how does it operate within the sports ministry? Yeah, so Ministry of Sports is an umbrella organization which governs the sports in Sri Lanka as as a whole. So under that, there is a primary department. I would say it's a department of sport development. So actually it was established like in 1966, but it became under the Ministry of Sports in 1980s. So until that, it was in like in the the, the separate organizations or maybe separate ministries. Uh, But later on, it it, it became like totally under the uh, Ministry of Sports. Uh, But if you want, then I can highlight like a little bit about the duties, what they are doing, shall I? Yeah, but um, yeah, I I I think you can do that. You can do that. Okay. Oh, at the, now or maybe later? Uh, you can do that. Very brief okay. uh, about the ministry. Otherwise, um, the main discussion for today, as you are aware, is um, to um, uh, look at the role of the NSFs and then other organizations as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, otherwise, yeah, so... I, I, I would I would want to ask that beside the um, sports, the Department for Sports for the Sports Development, um, well, I, I just mm-hmm. tried to do some due diligence and I, uh, I saw the Institute of Sports Medicine is both self-explanatory. Mm. There is National Institute yeah. for Sports Science also self-explanatory. But there is this that caught my attention, which is the um, Sugatha Dasa National Sports Complex Authority. What, what's yes. that? Yeah, actually, actually, like, you know, as you said, like the name wise, there are seven or uh, like I would say sport mini authorities. They are under the Ministry yeah. of Sports. They are governing that one. So Sugada yeah. uh, National Sports Authorities, that is the only one international stadium that we have it. Because even yeah. if you look at the synthetic track, we have two synthetic track. But yeah. this is the only one international standard one. But other one also, they made it. But I don't think so. The slopes are not... Uh, uh, okay. according to the international standards. So that's why this is the only one national sports complex authority under them, as well as okay. there are some professional sports complex they are having that one. And as you mentioned, National Sports Council, that is the topest umbrella body under that there is a chairman and there are 13 members. So they're fairly new members are there. Yeah. And that National Sports Council's responsibility or maybe their, their roles is to like advise the minister or maybe they are involved in the making the policies and they are advising how, how we can do the developments and everything. I think like in the previous times that the council was not that much of strong. Then the, after the new ministry has come, I think they are working on the new policy document. So now the policy document, what you are seeing on website is like from 1990, uh, uh, sorry, 2012 one, yeah. Okay, so um, now let's uh, thank you for that. Um, let's look at this. Um, the um, the national sports structures. I mean, from the um, how are they like? Do you have national sports structures, and um, how do they go down to the um, rural right. or district communities? Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's basically like uh, I think in the most of the developing countries, I think they are practicing the same ways. It's national level. Then after that, we have in Sri Lanka nine provinces, then provincial level. Then after that, each province they have district, maybe three district, four districts. So according to that, then district level associations. Yeah. So under the district level associations, there are clubs. But if you look at the football. They have league system like in in, in Jaffna. I'm, I'm from Jaffna district, so in in the, in that particular district, uh, uh, only there are four, four four leagues or three three four leagues. So okay. they have the league system, but all other sports uh, federations so they have the district, provincial level, and the national level system. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the, my question is um, the um, the sub national structures, which is the province, the provincial level to the um, the district level, um, are these structures um, autonomous or they, um, in a way, uh, are regulated at the national level? Yeah, district level, they are doing their own program, but the thing is, they don't have uh, the the financial benefits or financial support to do that one in the district level. Definitely, they have to depend on the national level. And some of the sports, yes, they can uh, get some sponsorship from the district level. But however, it is 
you know it's very hard especially from the rural area or rural uh, uh, districts but in colombo yes colombo is the capital there are a lot of companies they can sponsor and uh, there are some associations uh, the president and the secretaries they are like a rich people so they are spending their own money but if you look at the another part of sri lanka it's it's not there i would say straight away the sports is actually it's not uh, it's centralized to uh, colombo and kandy it's not decentralized at all so it should be so the sports has been practiced is most of the the area i would namely in colombo or the colombo surrounded district and in kandy that's a central province and the north part yeah so um i i was i was just coming to that that um how how do the government given your experience um in sri lanka how do government accommodate civil society organizations as well um in the kind of work that they do as by civil society i mean um private sector the ngos and then the academic sector as well oh yeah uh, not in terms of sports in general right yeah, yeah. i mean like in terms of sports uh, in general yeah yeah so basically like most of the schools are the government schools here so yeah. like in sri lanka is like we all really depend on the government but the thing is if you look at the past 10 years history the like the private system is slowly slowly it's coming you know like the, the us systems are coming there are so many international schools being for, formed here in sri lanka so now they are totally independent from the government and they are following the uk based system educational systems they are not really depending on the sri lankan government but however they can take part in the national level competitions the government level competitions but they have separate sports competitions as well for them it's called international sports festival something like international school sports festival uh but the thing is it's a great advantage like because i'm connecting with the sports so it's a great advantage to the uh sports because the thing is they are taking uh like the 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 young athletes those who are shining very well at the age of 12 13 14 because normally the government schools they can't give any financial support to the uh, the the kids but they are doing it so they are they are giving the scholarship and they are taking care of and they are educating those kids and they are sending abroad so this is how now i can see that that kind of structure changes is happening little by little yeah, yeah. and and, what, and what's but, your take uh, on that is it is it is this Sorry? something good or what's your take on that is this yeah, something yeah. good I, or bad I, I, yeah i would say this is good for sri lanka because the thing is you know sports is actually the comp, comp, competitive level is like going growing up right but the thing is uh, i would say some of the children yes they are being refused because if they don't get the chance to go to the international schools still they are struggling and they are in the rural level so the equal opportunity is not there but however in overall yes the sports is growing and we are also getting the facilities and we are getting benefits from abroad in a in a private way not because you know we can't really uh, depend on the government because our economy is also going down so in that case the government will not like spend a lot of money on sports definitely so they have to look at all of the things uh, yeah it's, it's there, in a, there, there've been there've been some arguments that i mean when the people yeah. when your great athletes leave the country then the country is left with nothing and yeah. in any case i mean sports issues are almost everywhere and yeah. um it's it's a more reason why it's now studied in academic institutions so that um, people with the interest and the knowledge will be able to um help in these situations and as we said without problems in sports management or in sports there will be no management yeah well in any case so um is there a sport policy in sri lanka and if and if there is at all is there a particular focus yeah there is a policy actually even even i think like um, i don't know whether you have learned the borga garcia's recent research on collaboration or maybe relationship between the sport authorities in sri lanka he has very clearly mentioned that right actually this is this is not to say really a policy but there is a policy of course it's been accepted in 2012 they have the vision that the sri lanka uh, to be as the strongest country in the asia something blah 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 but under that there are eight goals then under that 45 major component but the thing is there is nothing specific they have mentioned everything right you know we are going to develop the sports for development sports for peace 
uh, women empowerment everything is there but the thing is no not specifically mentioned that oh we, this is our part that we have to do it like grassroots level up and sports in sri lanka or maybe specific sports they didn't mention anything there because if you look at sri lanka as a country we can do some specific sports here like sri lanka is a beautiful and it's it, it's been attracted by a lot of tourists and we have beautiful beaches and surfing spots so we can go for surfing here you can't imagine when i go to the beaches area i think i can see 75 percentage of the people uh, having the, 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 the doing surfing is foreigners mm. very less people from sri lanka they are practicing surfing in sri lanka i think that that development is not there water sports are not there and we have mountains and no mountain sports but if you go to nepal there are a lot of mountain sports in korea they have a lot but we have beautiful mountains and all but we don't practice those kind of things i think th they have to change the policy according to that to attract the tourists and how we can develop the things and uh, as as borais also mentioned uh, like horse riding so there are a lot of horse riders are here but the thing is the sports is not here but very luckily uh, this year there's a one athlete uh, representing sri lanka and she has already qualified for the olympic games for equestrian sports um i think so those are the things have to be implemented and grassroots level should be given high priority um because uh, because mm -hmm. the thing is the education system is not really constructive i think that is also be more focused by the ministry of education i would add here yeah that's um interesting one and i am um, just like what i took from what you were saying and then some what i found from the sri lanka um website the ministry of sports website as you said it says the vision is sri lanka to be the strongest asian country in sports as yeah. you said and then the mission is to be a nation of champions in sports in a healthy yeah. discipline and unif unified and a prosperous society so yeah. yeah i mean like you said it has everything the vision is uh, more of a an elitist sport elite sports and then the 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 the, the mission is talking about more well, they're tuning to kind of like a sports for all sort of stuff but i mean like you said it's um there's there's room for improvement and and moving forward we see how things go for sri lanka i hope i hope that's what you said actually yeah yeah, yeah. And, and and second things Derek. you know when we are having these policies and all like we have to set it up for like a five years or maybe 10 years 10 years plan like i don't know like maybe you can agree that one like yeah. then we, our mission and the vision should be like so as to achieve for the next 10 years then we can improve our policy for the after the 10 years finishes but the thing is like this policy it's like a rocket science league because in asia we are no way to become as the strongest country because you know korea japan china and the, so many other countries are dominating in singapore of course it's not easy maybe in south asia at least we can even in south asia is also mm. like our, our sports level is like some of the sports just yes, we are shining it but however okay. uh, still we are struggling it yeah yeah well what, what i i told a friend that i'll be speaking with um an, an, an expert from Sri Lanka and, and, I, and, and the friend was like, oh, they play cricket. Well, let me ask you, what is the main sport in Sri Lanka? Is it right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, uh, cricket is uh, how many countries they are playing cricket. I don't know, maybe 20, 25 countries in the world they are playing yeah. like in elite level, but many countries maybe very recently there are so many other countries also practicing. Uh, so cricket is popular because 1996 we were the champion in the world cup then after that we came to the finals many times but unfortunately we didn't title it so because of the reason cricket is popular here in every region everywhere it's here but our national sports is of course it's volleyball the volleyball is mm. the only one sport is available in all the district in sri lanka all 25 district not even cricket i think by association maybe uh, but the thing is uh, apart from that it's football of course it's common because it's 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 popular in all the countries in the world i would say so the same as the number three i would name football then after that athletics yeah because it can be practiced by individually uh, yeah. of course if you look at the women's sports i would say like netball is also famous and in asia we are dominating so we we we, we became champion in asia two times yeah. yeah and of course it's, it's also been played by only few countries in asia 
So um, in, in, in brief, which one is the main, main sport? Would you say volleyball or cricket? Obviously, it's cricket. <laughs> Even if it is not the national sport, it's cricket. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, because that's what that's what most people around the world know. Is it Sri Lanka? Yeah. Is it no, cricket? even <laughs> even 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 we people, we we involved yeah. in this administration and the managing stuff, so we know that. But if you ask the general public, what is your national sports? They may say cricket for sure, or maybe yeah. some people they may say football, but we don't know. Well, okay. Now um, let's talk about funding. And where does National Sports Fund comes from in Sri Lanka? Uh, basically, simple answer is from government <laughs> because uh, no sponsors, nothing. And uh, uh, and uh, in, in Korean system is different. They are earning like lottery and the K-boating and K-cyclings. Uh, they are generating the money in a different way and it's very mm -hmm. successful. But uh, the betting system is bad in Sri Lanka, so we can't generate money like that. So we have to rely on the government funding. But we have the lottery system, but lottery is not directly going to the sports, but it's going to the government, then government allocation to the sports. Yeah, well, that's well said. And then let's look at it this way. You mentioned about the structures earlier on from the, um, yep. the sports ministry, probably the National Sports Council all the way to the district. How, yep. if you if you know, how are, how, are, how, how is funding distributed across these um, um, structures? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Like uh, uh, the funding, actually, there is no allocation. Like if there's a five million rupees, they don't divide by 25 district and give the OK, you give five, 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 five. Not really like that. Yeah. It depends on that. Like you have to send the proposal. Sometimes they donate equipment by equipment. Sometimes they donate by money. How they are donating mm -hmm. and how they are distributing the money is actually you have to develop the proposal what you are going to do. Like if you are going to do some development program or maybe coaching program or refereeing program or maybe some championship. So then you have to submit the budget. Yeah. And uh, if you want, then I can tell you openly if if the person or the top level administrator is very closer to you. Yes, he will sign for sure without any other asking so many questions. <laughs> right. So but uh, uh, if it's all about number one is relationship. Yeah. Number two is if your proposal is really nice and you are going to do the real things and all. If they're happy with that, they will they will provide the funding. Apart from that, every sports, there is a national competition and a provincial competition, district level competition. So for all this national under the ministry, so they will provide the fund to the fund to fund to such competitions. So it is so, already allocated annually. Yes. OK, that, that's well said. So in effect, they have they, they have to do the normal administrative procedure of yes. budgeting and then it's approved. Yes. Well, yes. it's just a budget so you may you are not sure whether it will be approved or it will be slashed it's always the case i guess yeah, <laughs> yeah. well i guess um this, this, this will sound funny but um it's, it's in sri lanka is sports driven by politics or politics is driven by sports which which one it is <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, of course. It, it's because, you know, when, when the politician changes, the, pol the, the sports changes, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and in some some sports, it's driving the politics as well. So I would namely like money-making sports like cricket and the, some of the rich sports, maybe they have they are getting the money from international federation like football. So mm -hmm. mostly, most of the politicians I saw towards those of those those two federations so cricket cricket yeah. can generate the money because when we are having the international competition in sri lanka definitely broadcasting and ticketing so we generate a lot of money here uh and we we hosted some world cup series as well uh so and they are they are really rich so that's why the politicians are more focused on that one and yeah. uh yeah yeah that is how it is but uh, rest of the federations they are not financially strong but the thing is uh, you know, uh, some of the people, if they want to get the benefit, as I told you, to make close relationship for the funding to develop the sports. Yes, they are with the politicians or I would say namely the minister. Yes. Yeah. So um, like it happens in most places, do they also use the sports to to canvass yeah. for votes and all that, especially when it's getting to election? That's when I mean, in most countries that the sports yeah. funding goes high. Yeah. Is that the case, or it's 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 different in Sri Lanka? Yeah, it's it's it, yeah, it's different. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so um, now let's look at the role of the national sports associations or federations, anyhow you call it, 
and their relationship with with the government. We have just talked about the um, the government structures and how right. it looks like in terms of funding. Usually, people don't know where the national sports federations or associations they place themselves, and this includes the NOC. But we we'll look at the NOC. That's the National Olympic Committee as a separate case. For now, let's look at the national um, sports federations. Um, a question of uh, with whom do they hold, do they owe allegiance? Is it to their respective international federations or to government? How do they play this? Since given your experience with the national sports federations for the past years. Right. Yeah, that's that's a good question. Actually, most of the national federations, they are very close relationship with the government because they get the funding and, uh, you know, they want to hold their position. So they need the support from their ministry. Uh, so that's the reason they always have in the close relationship with the ministry. And the thing is, as you know, like if they want to go for some championships, they need fundings. So that's the reason they have to totally rely on the Ministry of Sports. So they have it. And second thing is why they are like, I would say like most of the like small, small, like a Kabaddi or some other federations, they are having the close relationship with this ministry because they have lack of knowledge to communicate to with the international federations, maybe the language yeah. barriers are there. So that might be the reason. Uh, so they don't have really having the close relationship with the international federations uh, and the benefits from international federations might be less or maybe they want to sustain the post as the president secretary for the upcoming years. So that's the reason so this part is very important for them okay. because, you know, they are not going to go to the International Federation to hold any position uh, except a few federations. So that's the reason they are always like holding the Ministry of Sports. Well, um, for the purpose of, I'm not cutting you, but for the purpose of those listening, Kabaddi is a very, is a traditional sport in Asia and yeah. um, keenly contested. And that's what um, Sigo talked about. So um, you can please um, go on um, with um, your um what you were talking about i was just trying to explain to people what kabaddi is <laughs> uh-huh. <Yeah. laughs> all right <laughs> no kabaddi is actually it's originally from india okay. so and it, it's in india it's very famous they have a professional league and uh, uh, today also one of the uh, the kabaddi international um, figure he mentioned that it, it may be in the olympic sports as well very soon yeah. because now it's been practiced by many many countries and it's very yeah. competitive sports and it's not in not in not uh, because he mentioned in the asian championship in the last asian championship india also lost because people they think that india is dominating all mm. the times but india became the third place so it, it, it is one of the, the the very very biggest sports in india next to cricket mm. yeah so is it is it fair to say from what you were talking about that the national sports federations that uh, are not too strong or less funded or do not have strong international federations it depends heavily on the government one second wait sorry come again Some, the yeah, is, is, it, is, it, is it fair to say that the um the sports federations the national sports federations that are not too strong or um, do not have very strong international um, sports federations depend heavily on government compared to uh, the likes of cricket and then um, football. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because because you know to run the federation they need the finance support. That is the number one priorities yeah. for cricket and cricket and football. Football, of course, they are getting the funding from international federation. And uh, cricket, they, they can generate themselves. And also, they are also getting the international uh, funding from ICC. But all of the federations, I don't think so. They don't, they don't really getting that much of big amount. Maybe like, yeah. because I'm, I'm, I'm from Tech Ball. They also funded us only for like six months of period. That is like only $3,000 for the initial development. So after that, they didn't. So we have to find the partner locally. But it's not easy because, you know, in Sri Lanka, people, they are coming forward and funding to sports. Uh, only few people they do, but that funding is also not enough to run the federation for one year. So the next year, so what they, what they can do, it's, it's in a question. And second thing is the sports must be popular before that. If it is popular sports, cricket, football, people, they will come forward and they will sponsor. But athletics, of course, there are some people, they are doing it. But other sports, it's, it's nowhere. Yeah, that's so, the reason yeah they they have to always go with this ministry to get the fund and they are building up the relationship to get more benefits yeah. so at, at what point do any of the national sports federations 
receive funding support from government? Is it periodic uh, or it's um, or consistently or reg regularly? That's the better word, yeah. Yeah, th that is that is same as I told you before. It is uh, upon their request. They have to request us. Like say for an example, for tech ball, we never get a single one rupee from Ministry of Sports. But when we were conducting uh, some coaching camp, we invited international uh, coach and we conduct the program. So in that case, we requested the ministry, okay, we need this amount of food to this this much of people. They don't they didn't give us finance, but they provided us the food and the facilities. That's it. Okay. And um, this is how the system is. It, it's as I told you before, it's upon our budget, upon our proposal, proposing to them. So um, let's let's look at it this way. Um, I don't really know the details of the sports policy and whether it's a law in itself, but um, can they can the national sports federations legally claim funding from government? Um, not really legally, no. No, it's it's just like requesting in a letter and they're getting it, but uh, that kind of culture is not there at all. It's it's mm. as I told you before, it's number one relationship. Number two is just writing an email or writing the letter and getting the funding if they approve it. Otherwise, yeah. you have to seek for sponsorship. But what's what's your opinion? Do you think this should be um, a matter of law or? Um... I think I think it must be. It must be because you know. Uh, at least by percentage, uh, you have to allocate the money for each sports. Like I'm not saying you have to give everyone equal amount of money. It's by yeah. popularity. It's uh, it's by the mm. number of participants or number of clubs in Sri Lanka. You can, they, mm -hmm. That allocation must be there. Yeah, yeah. And because I, I was also looking at the fact that, I mean, these are NGOs or quasi-NGOs. And... Yeah they are more connected to the international sports federations and should government interfere you know there's going to be a, a huge outcry mm -hmm. in any case um that's the part of the national sports federations now in most countries or in some countries let's put it that way the national sports the national olympic committee is um, connected to the national sports federations and together they form one unit an example is norway and um, some other um, countries in Europe. In other countries too, you have the National Olympic Committee standing on its own. Then you have the National Sports Federations under the National Sports Council. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes the National Sports Federation stand on their own, the National Sports Council stand on their own, and then you have the National Olympic Committee also standing on their own. What is yeah. the case in Sri Lanka? <laughs> Sri Lanka is National Olympic Committee of Sri Lanka is an yeah. independent and non-profitable and it's a private organization. It is yeah. straight away un under this International Olympic Committee. Yeah. I would say what is the relationship between National Olympic Committee and the Ministry of Sports? We are just working closely, uh, closely working with them. That's it. We don't have any relationship. We don't get any single one rupee from them and we don't request any funding for that. But for the athletes, uh, uh, expenditures just we we give the proposal but say for an example if uh, if we are going for the south asian games or asian games yep. uh, the expenditure for the national olympic committee staff we don't request from the ministry we take care of all the costs by ourselves so this is how this national olympic committee is running and we are getting the support from national olympic committee they are supporting from international olympic committee and also sponsorship from the local companies yeah. So, um, at what are you trying to say that governments do not support it, even the athletes at all when they go for the um, Olympic Games and all that? Uh, they do. The government they do. They do support. Okay. Uh, say for an example, the upcoming Olympic Games. Uh, there are some athletes they are going, and uh, some of the part is being covered by the National Olympic Committee. But athletes, uh, maybe accommodation, not in the accommodation. Uh, some of the VIP accommodations and the journalist accommodation that is actually not inside this team, the, the team of the country. Mm -hmm. So they are being like uh, spent by the government um, and uh, maybe flight tickets and uh, yeah, flight tickets is also be by the uh, government. Maybe it will be like uh, upon this sponsorship by the Sri Lankan Alliance if they are if they are coming partner with us. 
Yeah. You you mentioned about the National Sports Council um, also being under the, um, the sports ministry, the Ministry of Youth and Sports. How do the National Olympic Committee operate? Do they pass through the National Sports Council to the Ministry of Youth and Sports or they just go straight to government? They have a dotted line, dotted relationship straight to the ministry. Uh, you're asking like National Olympic Committee, Ministry of Sports and the government? Yes. So, you know, you um, the Ministry of um, Sports has yeah. a council, a National Sports Council, right? Or a National right. Sports yeah. Authority. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and they also, it trickles down to the district, isn't it? So mm -hmm. my question is, the National Olympic Committee, do they have, do they, do they contact the ministry straight or they pass through the National Sports Council? No, National Olympic Committee, they don't have any relationship with the National Sports Council okay. because National Sports Council's responsibility is to advise the Ministry of advice, Minister yes. yeah. and, uh, and they are involved in the policies and the developments. So, oh, but we yes. are not involved in these three. So that's the reason mm -hmm. we don't really having any close relationship with the National Sports Council. So if we have any uh, works or any in, in, in discussions, so we straight away with the Ministry of Sports, but it's 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 very very rarely it happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, um, we are almost doing our time, but this is going to be an interesting question, and let's see how yes. you handle that, because you've 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 you have you have spent a lot of good time um, with the ministry with the uh, national sports federations. Yourself, yeah. you've been an athlete before. Now let's take it this way: Should you be the Minister of Sports? Minister of um, Youth and Sports, right? Is it yeah. uh, Sports and Youth or whichever way? What changes are you going to bring to Sri Lanka? Yeah, of course, like I really want to see that National Olympic Committee and the Ministry of Sports, they have to work closer because, you know, otherwise always there is like, uh, like, you know, the National Olympic Committee themselves, they are, they are feeling that they are like a separate and the top body and Ministry of Sports, they are saying they are feeling that they are the top level body in Sri Lanka for sports. So that's the reason. But when we are going for the competitions, for the games, for the games only, they became closer. Then after that, it's gone. But now, it very recently onwards, we are like a, talking about high performance, high performance, but we don't have the high performance facilities in Sri Lanka. So what we are doing under the name of high performance, we are just sending the athletes to Qatar or some other countries. That's it. Mm. So these, these are the only two minor parts that we are doing it. Apart from that, we are not really working closer. I think this nature should change because, you know, when we are doing some real development in our country, we have to work together uh, because National Olympic Committee is going in another track of because they are focusing on education and some sustainable projects and uh, and and high performance things and it's also for, they are sponsoring for the junior championship by seeking the sponsorship from the private entities but mm -hmm. ministry of sports they are they have to be very keen in developing the grassroots level up to the elite level sports so when we are talking about elite level so both of us have to work together because they are doing separate high performance activities and noc is doing separate high performance act activities but they are not going together, but uh, we have to like collaboratively work together. Then only we can achieve our target and goal. So otherwise yeah. it's just, okay, you are giving $1,000. I'm giving $2,000. Okay, next time I'll give $3,000. It's just, you know, they are just uh, putting the collar like that and showing that oh, I'm rich, I'm richer than you. I'm doing more for my country, something like that. This nature will not develop, will, will not uh, really develop the sports, but uh, yeah. I think if they both have to come to the table and they have to work closer, uh, then only it will uh, uh, develop the sports in Sri Lanka. That's that's what I always say, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think you've touched some very important structures and points over there. You've spoken about the grassroots terms, national structures. You've spoken about national sports federation. You've also touched the private sector as well. Um, lately, I've seen you've developed some interest in sport for development. And it's not only you, it's across the world using sports for the sustainable development goals. More countries are adding it to their national development agenda. Yeah. What's your take on this? What is the role? What role do you think NGOs using sports as a tool for development can play so far as um, sports is concerned in Sri Lanka? 
Yeah, so basically, like, you know, we came across the 30 years war in Sri Lanka. So basically, like, we have uh, three, four different ethnic uh, groups. Uh, like, if you look at the history, Sinhalese, Muslims, and Tamils, they have the clashes between these, like, one time Sinhalese and Muslims, then Muslims, Tamils, and Tamil Sinhalese. Hmm. Tamil Sinhalese war was, was, like, 30 years war. So it ended up in 2009. Then after that, the lot of re reconciliations are happening, and yeah. it's especially the sp like the sport became as a tool because in cricket is the very very important sports in Sri Lanka as we mentioned before. So the the Sri Lankan cricket and with some private entity they 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 established a new concept called Morali Harmony Cup. They introduced it. They brought that championship in the war affected area. So they brought two communities there. So they led them to play the the, the youths. So that that is like slowly, slowly they started to understand each community. Now, if you look at this, like even it's it's almost like twelve years. But the thing is, the tension between these two communities, like I would say, compared to two thousand nine, if it is hundred percentage now, I would I can see that it's like uh, ten to fifteen percentage. Yeah, it says it says reduce a lot. So in that case, I think sports has played a lot and especially you know when when we are supporting for sports as a country sri lanka everyone is supporting most of the people are supporting sri lanka when sri lanka is uh, uh, playing against pakistan or india or in bangladesh or any, any other countries in, in cricket so that is how like we 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 have to develop and um, when the sports comes definitely people they are supporting to sri lanka a lot of people i think sports okay. plays a major role in sri lanka as well uh, to bring the community together well, so uh, which means that I mean, um, this the reconciliation bit has been happening way before yeah. even the UN started talking about it. I guess, mm -hmm. uh, given that there have been um, past problems and upheavals between um, um, com ethnic the different ethnic groups. Well, yeah. on that note, I want to say thank you so much. Um, you have um, done justice to um, sports in Sri Lanka from. Um, the public to the private sector. And I must say that um, I'm very grateful for agreeing to take part in this episode, uh, whereby um, we kind of like discuss these things and let people know that um, yeah. sport is bigger than the ones that our respective countries focus on, like cricket, football, and rather is broad. Is broad. It can be used in various ways, just like you mentioned, there was war, yeah. And sports played a very huge role in them um, yeah. trying to bring people together. So thank you so much, Sigo. I'm very, very grateful. Thank you very much, Derek, for having me for this uh, such a great discussion. And uh, hopefully see you soon. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>